a girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Hotter, and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. I gotta tell you, there's a union. And it's a, there's a, you know, and there's three of them. There's actually, I didn't know this. There's like three unions in Mexico, three really? different trade unions trying to protect workers' rights. Because, and I, you know what, they got a problem down there with workers' rights. They've been exploiting the the general public down there for years. They're always taking advantage in low wages, bad working conditions, and so anyway. Canada and and, and the U.S. each have a union. Mm-hmm. and uh, UAW for the car business I'm talking. There's three different unions in Mexico the car business could go with. And apparently, here's the story. General Me- uh, GM Mexico, that's their, in, in Mexico, union vote draws questions from the AFL-CIO Unifor. And Unifor, Unifor is the Canadian one. AFL-CIO course is here. The largest unions in the U.S. and Canada are raising questions over the fairness of a vote that's set to take place at General Motors truck plant in Mexico. Workers eligible to be unionized at the plant have been asked to vote February 1st and 2nd on which of four unions, I'm sorry, it's not three, Eric, it's four unions, wow. they prefer to represent them in negotiations for a new contract. <clears throat> Canada's Unifor Union said in a letter to Mexican labor authorities, January 18th, that there are substantial reasons for doubt the vote will be free and fair. In a separate statement, the U.S. label Labor Federal, Federale, AFL-CIO, said it is concerned by the lack of protection for workers' rights inside that GM plant. One of the unions on the ballot in two weeks is a... Cha- <laughs> Uh, this is bad. This, well, they got a little problem in Mexico too with corruption. One of the one of the unions on the ballot in two weeks is a chapter of Mexico's largest and most entrenched syndicate, known as the CTM. Unifor said the CTM union has used previous delays in the vote campaign in the workplace to put in place additional unions to divide worker votes. So they're playing a little game there. In August. Workers at the plant voted to cancel their union contract after the U.S. initiated a dispute over conditions at the factory in a, hist- in a historic victory for the new North American Free Trade Agreement. The AFL-CIO said that the GM and Mexican Labor Authority need to guarantee the conditions for a fair and open union election as prescribed by the U.S. MCA and the Mexican Labor Reform. Well, let me just tell you. Yeah, they don't want to elect the guys that are part of that syndicate. That Mexico's got a problem down there. There's some. There's some, and the, it depends on who pays who. Even the president. I, I don't know how far it goes. Remember now, by the way, all the all the things you hear on the car show, the opinions and and sayings and everything I say to you, is strictly the opinion of your car guy, Big George. Has nothing to do with the radio stations or any of its affiliates or any of its sponsors or any of my sponsors. Matter of fact, they don't want nothing to do with me anyway. <laughs> and I don't blame them. But sometimes I, I have to say it like it is. And all of you know, and I've said this for 15 years on the air, I've been telling you I'm not pro-union, I'm not anti-union. There are some things I love about the union, and there's some things I hate. And then there's things I don't love about different unions that I hate. I mean, it just goes on and on. It goes both ways with me. I don't have a problem with the union. I love I love the training. I love the expertise. And I love that the people are paid correctly and they have good health benefits. All that is important. That's great. But when they say this other union is a member of a syndicate, we don't need any more of that. You know we had a UAW scandal the last couple of years. I've been reporting on it for three years. And it's just, that's the kind of problem that unions breed fat cats get their taste of money and they just want to and there's a lot of cash involved there's a lot of money involved they 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 suck them dry and you got to make sure that that money goes back into the union people and gets back to them for training and benefits and yada yada that's why they put money in you administer the union and take care of your people you don't drain the union funds okay 
There's where I differ with unions. That's the problem. And they're going to have a problem in Mexico if they elect that one union. Because <laughs> I can just see it. I've, I've been to Mexico 25 times and I've seen many, many unjust things. And just you just keep your mouth shut when you're down there. They'll throw you in jail and throw the key away. Now, you're wondering about used vehicle prices. Well, vehicle prices, new or used, okay? The price surges have exacerbated by the combination of high consumer demand and parts shortages constraining vehicle inventory. In other words, the chip shortage, yada, yada, plus other parts shortages. They can't even build cars. I can't repair them and they can't build them. And they have made this even worse. And that's why all these car dealers now are having the best years of their lives. They're only selling one-third the cars they had in the years past, but they're, but they're getting two-thirds more money for them. U.S. private sector employees needed more time to save more enough money to buy a used and new cars last year as vehicle prices ballooned faster than wages grew. A study by consulting firm Anderson Economic Group concluded. The Consumer Price Index, that's the U.S. Bureau of Stati Labor Statistics measurement of the average change over time in prices paid by consumers for an assort over time change over time in prices paid for a paid by consumers for an assortment of goods and services soared 37 percent for used vehicles in december 2021 compared with december 2020 37 percent that's over a third more than what you paid for that same used vehicle last year the average price of a used vehicle was $27,569 in November of 2021. That's still high. And that was up from $21,708 in November of 2020. New vehicle prices jumped to an average of $47,077 in December 2021, up from $41,335 in December of 2020. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you this is crazy, just absolutely crazy. 928 car guys, if you want to weigh in on that, uh, it's just, just nuts, just nuts. And on a good note, I have a good note here. Finally got something good to tell you, Eric. For 40 grand, you, auto technicians competed for top honors. Nobody asked me to compete. Of course, I'm, my arthritis is so bad, I don't know if I could actually wrench anymore, but I could run them right through it, and I can fix anything, trust me. Yeah, but for 40 grand, you know. For 40 grand, I'd have fixed a lot of stuff. <laughs> right. I'd have cut my own toenails for 40 grand. A national competition just declared a winner for the title of the best auto tech in America. That's because they didn't ask me. Meet Logan Brown. Seems like a nice guy. Logan Brown admits to being a bit skeptical when he heard about the competition to find the best automotive technician in the country. I thought it was a scam, the Lebanon, Pennsylvania, said this tech from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Once convinced the inaugural U.S. Auto Tech National Championship was legitimate, he drove to Boston in early October to compete and win a qualifying event. His reasoning was simple. 40 grand, he said, citing the $40,000 first place award for the championship and a free trip to Nashville site of the finals. On December 14th, Brown, a tech at local Pennsylvania repair shop, it's a small shop, bested 31 other competitors in Music City to win the professional division, a trophy and that $40,000 check. The runner-up in each division took home twenty grand in prize money. Third place received uh -huh. ten grand. So these people are making money. Randy Giro, who t attends University of Northwestern Ohio, won the first student division. He had a similar reaction. He said, "Oh, I like the money." You know what? It is what it is, and I'm I'm glad for the guy. That's because they didn't ask me. If they'd asked me, he wouldn't have won. I Four guarantee grand. it. That's all right. I'm a little smug, but you know what? If you're not a little smug, shouldn't be on a... You know. hey, 20 grand is still a good amount of money. Well, if you're not a little smug, you shouldn't be out bragging. That's, that's all. True. That's true. All right. 20 grand can get me out of debt. The, yeah, me too. <laughs> the big shift to electric vehicles, and suppliers are differing on this, on what's going to give here. And here's the deal. 
Do we really think electric vehicles are the future? Well, yes, they're supposed to be. And they're going to be. Trust me. These guys would not be putting GM, Ford, Chrysler, and all of them, uh, BMW and Toyota, pouring billions of dollars into electric vehicle research, building plants. They're building battery plants. They're building assembly lines. They're building everything, getting ready for the electric vehicle era. They don't want to be left behind, and they're all worried about they're going to get left behind by the next guy. By the, you know, GM's worried that Ford's going to outdo them and, and Chrysler's going to get outdone by both of them, I'm sure. Because they're always one, you know, they're always on the back end. But I got to tell you, they don't all believe in them. They just don't. And right now, we have, our country wants to have all electric vehicles by 2035. And some countries in Europe want them by 2030. And you have to convince an awful lot of people to drive a car that is so inconvenient that it might change their lifestyle. You can't stop at the gas station and fill up your tank and take off and go, go to the rest of the day. You have to go somewhere, park your butt down, and charge your car before you can go anywhere so bring up you know bring some lollipops with you bring a laptop bring a bring your phone that seems to be the kids can stare at their phone all day and but <laughs> i'm telling you this this electric car is not a convenience it's good for the environment yes it is is the electric is the is the footprint the carbon footprint no if we start making our electricity with hydro hydrogen we will re greatly reduce the carbon footprint. Right now, our electricity is made by coal plants, uh, electric plants, and that is not a good. That's a that's a big That's a huge polluter. But we won't be driving cars that are polluting. Maybe, not all of it. You got people out there that will never succumb to an electric vehicle, and you're going to have car makers that are going to still make those cars available. I'm telling you, we'll talk about it when I come back because I've got some reports here. I want to I want to tell you who's talking what. But yeah, it's uh, the ZF Group and Magna International want to tell you all about it, and I'm going to tell you. All right, we're going to talk about these electric vehicles and the shift to electric vehicles. And I don't think everybody is excited about it as the government and everybody else is. And there's a couple of opinions out here that you need to know. You need to hear this. I mean, you actually need to hear this. In the big shift to electric vehicles, supplier forecasts differ. Here at, at last week at the established uh, automakers and industry newcomers talked up electric vehicles at the Consumer Electronics Show last week. Major suppliers for many of those vehicles have significantly different forecasts for how quickly consumers will buy them. Hello? <clears throat> They're not going to transition to this easily. I don't know how long it took them to give up the horse and buggy, but it, it, I'm sure it didn't happen in two years. The Take ZF Group and Magna International, the world's third and fourth largest suppliers. ZF anticipates electric vehicle production accounting for 45% of global vehicle output by 2030, and electric vehicles representing 49% of all vehicles assembled in North America. That's still only half. Magna, meanwhile, sees electric vehicles accounting for only 20% of the global market by 2030 and the US coming in below the global average okay so it's going to be under 20 percent Magna Mag, Magna chief technology officer Anton Mayer told Automotive News that the consumer acceptance of electric vehicles may be hindered by each country's charging infrastructure okay uh, in Europe, I see a lot of activity and investments in infrastructure, he said. In the U.S., I see the possibility of the administration that they want to spend a lot of, on a lot of things. But I'm still critical about this if it, were, if it will be the right in time. This will be in the right time. It will not. 
we're not going to, you're changing, let's finish this first, then, then you can listen to my rant and rave. Tavares, this guy, Tavares, okay, Carlos Tavares is the, well, we have a lot of Carlos in the car business, I hope this guy doesn't turn into Carlos the Edsel, <laughs> I don't know, your Chrysler didn't have a flop, oh, Carlos the DeSoto, that was a flop, anyway, the electrification industry and technology is chosen by politicians, not the industry. The European Commission's strategy to phase out combustion engines in favor of electric vehicles is a political choice that carries environmental and social risks, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares said in an interview with the European newspapers. I wonder if he's going to have to sneak out of Europe in a, a crate marked uh, electric equipment or hey, something. We like, need another story like that, so I hope so. We need another story <laughs> like that. Yeah, we do. That was cool. Since merging Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot maker PSA Group, Tavares has mapped out a 30 billion euro, that's $34 billion, electrification plan that helps Stellantis shares surge more than 60% in their first year. Yay, team. He's going electric. He says he is. What is clear is that the electrification is a technology chosen by politicians, not by industry, he said in a joint interview with France's Les Echos, Handelsblatt, Corrier de la Sierra, and El Mundo. He added that they were there were cheaper and faster ways of reducing carbon emissions. Uh-oh. Given the current European energy mix, an electric car needs to drive 70,000 kilometers, 44,000 miles to us Yanks, to compensate for the carbon footprint of manufacturing the battery and the smart and to smart start catching up with the light hybrid vehicle which costs half as much as an EV. He also said a ban on internal combustion engine vehicles by 2035 in Europe means car makers will need to start transforming their plants and supply chains very quickly. That's two different, that's three different opinions against what you're hearing. And I'm going to tell you, if you think this is going to be, if you think by 2030, that's all that's going to be out there is electric cars, you're wrong. That's not how it's going to happen. Eventually, that's, that will be what's out there. But the electric and uh, hydrogen, there'll be, there'll be no more gasoline-powered cars, eventually. But is that going to happen overnight? No, Eric. No. Eric, that is not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen by 2030, 2035. It's not going to happen by 2050. It's going to take that long to get all these cars, first of all, get all of them off the road, that they're still building up until 2025, 2029. Those cars last 10, 15, 20 years. They're going to be on the road. And there are people that are so dead set against electric that they're going to, they're going to keep driving them as long as they can and repairing them. Of course, you won't be able to get parts for them. You won't be able to get gas for them. Right. Where's the gas stations going to be? They're all going to be turned into charging stations with one gas pump. And that's, that's eventually how it's going to work out. It's going to phase their way out. <laughs> The fact, that, the fact that you said with one gas pump is just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like the old livery stable went out when a horse's buggy was going out yeah. and became a gas station, you know, with a repair shop in it. You know, it was the, that was a livery stable, but it was for the cars. So I don't know what you call it. They call, now call it a gas station mechanics garage. It's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen easy. And a lot of people are dead set. Me, I don't care. If I want to get an electric car, I'll get one. I just know... That right now, we are in this beta version, and he just loves that word, beta. Beta. Yeah, I know. He just loves that word. But we're in that test stage, and everybody is pushing all these electric cars out there, and nobody really knows exactly what gives. 